Hi there. Um, in my last video, I showed you, showed you how to take apart an IT Sonoff S20 socket. Um, and in that video, as well as, well as dismantling the socket, we attached um, some headers to the um, circuit board and we updated the firmware on the device, um, taking away the IT Zone firmware, which connects to their proprietary server and, and works with their app, um, to firmware called ESP Easy, which allows you to talk via your home um, uh, wireless network using the MQTT or the Mosquito protocol um, and ultimately talk to home automation servers on in your own household. Um, in this video, what I'm going to do is just take you through the settings that I apply to my ESP Easy um, devices. Um, and in this case, we're going to control a lamp in one of the bedrooms of the house. Uh, and I'm going to show you just the settings that I employ. So in the last video, we, we showed you how to, to get the, the ESP Easy software attached to your home network. Um, I've now logged into the um, uh, ESP Easy so software uh, via password. Um, and now I'm just going to go through the different settings. So I'm going to start off in the um, config settings. Um, in the config settings here, we can set a name, a unique name for the device. Um, and we can also give it a password. Um, rest assured, secure password is not the password that I normally use for these devices. Um, you can see my SSID and my WPA key. Uh, thankfully, that's been blotted out there. Um, and uh, yep, um, you can also see um, the unit number. Now, the unit number in this case is um, the unit number for a network of these ESP Easy devices. Um, if you want them to talk to each, each other directly rather than via mosquito, then the unit number is, it helps them identify one another. Um, so in this case, I've given this number six because this is the sixth device that I've set up. I've got about 10 in my network now. Um, and yeah, I just give it a different device each time. Um, You'll also see the protocol, and um, there's a number of different protocols that you can pick here. So the ESP Easy uh, firmware will work with several different home automation systems. Um, in my case, I'm going to be connecting to OpenHab, so I've just asked for the OpenHab MQTT. I've then told it the um, IP address for the controller. Now, this IP address is the server in which your Mosquito um, server resides, um, which in my case is the same as my OpenHab server, and it's all on um, A23 in my network. The controller port is 1883. That's the, the standard kind of um, port that's used by MQTT. I haven't changed that on the Mosquito server, so I don't need to change it here. Um, sensor delay at 60 just means that it won't flood my um, Wi-Fi network um, if I connect a sensor. In this device, there are no sensors attached, so it's a kind of pretty redundant setting. Now, under the optional settings, I prefer to give um, hard-coded IP addresses to each of my ESP Easy devices. Um, and I've got them starting in the hundreds, um, which keeps them well clear of any automatically assigned IP addresses that my routers assigned. So all the IP, the low number IPs are for things like computers, for laptops, for tablets, for telephones, for televisions. Um, and all my home automation devices start up in the hundreds. Um, this is just more for, for me, just so that I can uh, easily find the devices. The ESPGW, that's the gateway that I need to tell it, in which case uh, it's uh, zero 01 on my network, um, and the subnet is 255.255.255.0. Um, the DNS, I'm not entirely sure why it needs a DNS, uh, but I've given it the DNS 8.8.8, .8 which is one of the Google servers. Moving on to the hardware. Now, the hardware is where I tell the device um, what, what should the hardware, um, how should the hardware be set up when the device powers up? Um, the first thing that I've done with my device is I've given it a Wi-Fi status LED. So on the actual device itself, there's a, a green lamp which um, backlights the power button. Um, and some people use that green lamp to, to indicate the state of the relay so that you know whether your item is switched on or off. Um, in my case, I use it to tell me whether or not the ESP device is connected to my wireless network. So I'm just giving it, it's GPIO 13 is the um, pin number on the ESP8266 microcontroller. Um, and I've just set that up because I, I like to be able to see whether I'm connected. Um, SDA and SEL are normally filled in. I'm not using any I2C devices in this particular um, socket. So I just switch them to blank. Um, and I don't want any pins switched on or off when the device powers up. So everything else is just left at default. 
The next item is called devices. Um, and then the devices, um, we can set up multiple devices. Um, the first device that I set up is the light switch. Now the light switch is connected to GPIO. Let me just go into the settings for this and show you how this is set up. So it's set up as a switch input. There's very many different devices that it could use there. Um, and I always give mine the name light switch. So each of my um, sockets are uh, controlling lamps and I've used the same name for the device name each time. It just means that um, it, my rules can be copied and pasted from one device to another. The delay is zero. I don't need it to be the delay because this is an actual switch and I want it to react immediately. IDX variable. I got caught out with this originally. Um, it's not required for um, an open hub installation, uh, but for some reason within the firmware, if you don't put anything in there, then this switch just doesn't work. So I've given it the number one, um, but it's completely unimportant. I could have put any number in there. Uh, what is important is I tell it which pin this switch is attached to and on the Sonoff device the pin number is GPIO0 um, and that's the physical pin on the microcontroller that we're talking about. The switch is a push button switch so we need to have a pull up resistor um, engaged here. This means it's going to pull the voltage high when there's no other input um, and yeah it just needs to be, be, be done. The switch type is set as a switch. Um, because it's a relay device that this is, a, so it's an on and off state that we want to register. Um, the next item is the switch button type, and for the actual physical push button, we're going to say push button active low. That means that when you press that button, it's going to connect the um, the pin to ground, um, and it, the it'll it'll register a push button when it gets a a, a, a zero voltage on that particular pin. Um, the other one I've got here is send data. The send data allows me to um, send an MQTT message whenever that pre switch, press, uh, switch is pressed. That means that from my open hub installation, I can see switches being pressed and I can show the states of switches in the open hub. I'll maybe show you that in a later video. Um, the value one um, switch, you'll see how that applies within the rules there. That's the default and I'm just going to leave that as is. Looking at my other devices, um, the next device I have is called Light State. Now, Light State is attached to GPIO 12 on the ESP8266 controller, and that's the same pin that the relay is attached to inside the device. Now, what I use Light State for is to check to find out what state the relay is in at any given point, because when I press my push button in the front, if that relay is switched high, that means the relay is active, then I want to, to, to flip it so that it switches at low. If the relay is currently sitting in a low state, I want to flip it so that it, it goes to a high state. So this is just being, this is just being used to control that. Um, again, it has no delay. I've given it a random number. I've just given it the number two because it's after one. Um, and as I said before, it's connected to GPIO 12, which is the physical pin on the microcontroller that the relay is attached to. This time, however, I don't have a pull-up because I'm not wanting to um, register anything here. This is already going to be done by the um, relay, or the, or the, the state the relay is in. Um, so I'll leave that with nothing in it. I'll leave it as a switch, and this time it's a normal switch because I don't want it to register a high or a low when a button is pressed. It's going to tell me the state and that state is not going to change for a while at a time. So if some if the device connected to my sawn off is switched on, it'll probably be switched on for a while. If it's switched off, it'll not probably be switched off at a while. A bit like a switch, uh, a physical switch that you might use to switch a, a, a light on in your house. Um, I don't really need to send data in this case because this is more for use inside the um, the ESP Easy's own logic, but I do anyway, which just means that from my open hub installation, if I want to, I can monitor the actual state of the relay. Again, I'm not changing this value from switch, um, and that's all that I really need. Now. Those are the two devices I need to make this thing happen. Um, but I do have one third device, which is simply uptime. The uptime um, sends system information 
every 60 seconds, which is set by this delay here. Um, and um, it sends a message to my um, a mosquito server just saying how long the switch has been active for. Um, I don't really use this in the open hub installation at all. I use it more for checking if our switch is unresponsive. I can tell whether or not it's maybe not here in Mosquito or whether or not it's just maybe hung uh, within the ESP Easy firmware. I've never actually had that happen, but you know, who knows, maybe. So the only other thing I've done here is I've put a little formula in here. The formula takes the uh, time in seconds, the uptime in seconds, and divides it by 60. Um, and the reason for doing that is so that rather than it, it give me uptime expressed as seconds, it's given me the uptime expressed as minutes. It just makes it a little bit easier for me to understand. Now the rules section I will come back to because when you're setting this um, device up for the first time, there won't be a rules menu available and we have to activate that before we can actually apply some rules. So to do so we go into tools and we go to advanced. Now from advanced, um, the first few things that we've got here are the subscribe template and the publish template. This relates to the MQTT messages um, and I'm not going to change them. I'm just going to, they're already set when I said that it was an open hub installation that I've had. Um, you can mod modify them there if you really need to, but I'm not going to. The first thing that I do change, however, is this MQTT retain message. Um, I discovered this um, through trial and error and it turns out it makes my entire system a lot more reliable than when it's not engaged. What it does is when um, the socket sends a message via um, Mosquito to say whether it's been switched on or switched off, um, it adds a flag to that message that tells the Mosquito server to um, hold on to save this MQTT message um, and whenever somebody subscribes to the topic um, to, to play it back. Um, the reason why we have this switched on is, say I hit my socket and I switch on the lamp in the bedroom, and at that particular time, for some reason, OpenHab, my home automation software, isn't listening. It's having a problem or it's not on or something like that. Um, what happens then is, at the time where OpenHab reconnects to the Mosquito server, it will then get a list of all the different retained messages. Um, it just means that the, it can catch up with a message that it would have missed. If it's not retained the message, then it relies on OpenHab being listening at the time where that switch is pushed. Um, so this just makes things a little bit more reliable through the whole system. I do the same thing on the OpenHab um, side of things that when it sends a, a message to switch a light on or off, it adds a retain so that if the um, switch for some reason is not connected, um, that it will catch up with the message later on and it will eventually com uh, do the command. Message delay doesn't matter because this again is not um, a, a sensor that we're dealing with. Um, the use NTP, it really doesn't matter for me. This um, this connects to NTP servers um, and gets the actual time from the internet. Um, none of the rules I'm going to use rely on time, so actually I don't need to have NTP switched on. The next thing that I do have switched on is the system log. Um, in my home server, I have a system log server running as well. And this is where I can send um, debug information uh, or system log information. So should there be a problem with my ESP Easy firmware, it sends um, that the, the warnings and things like that to the system log. So, um, I can probably switch this off now because the thing's working really well, um, but it's very handy for, for debugging problems in your, your network, for instance. Um, the system log level determines how much it should be. Um, so you can do it from one to four and that varies from sending the most scant information where there's, there's a major problem all the way to sending every single piece of information about how the system's responding. Um, I've got it set to two, which if I remember correctly is warnings and errors. Um, the next item is the UDP port, um, and I've got mine set here to 65500. Um, the UDP port is used by the ESP sockets when they talk to one another. So as well as talking to my home automation system via MQTT, they're also able to talk to each other using ED UDP commands. Um, I just leave that to 6550. I'm not actually using that particular um, system at the moment, although I might do later on, um, but it does have a, a, an added benefit, which means that I can see or, or I can see a list of all my different devices. Now I've switched off the serial port. Um, 
The reason why I've done so is that the serial ports, the, the, the physical port which is on the actual socket, now that's encased in plastic and I can't actually attach to it while the socket's working. So there's real no point in having it switched on. So I've switched it off to, to kind of save some uh, effort on the behalf of the microcontroller. Um, the rest of the settings here relate to how fast it speaks to, to, to that um, port. Um, and as I say, I'm not going to use it. I'm also not using I2C devices in this particular socket, so I've got nothing to set up there. I do have used SDP on. It just means that Windows is able to see and list home automation devices. I will say that although it works sometimes, it's a bit sketchy, so it's not essential that you switch that on, I would suggest. And um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not totally convinced on that one. Um, you will want to have the rules switched on. Um, this is where we're going to be able to tell it how to behave independently of OpenHab. So when I press, press a button on the device, it's the, the rules that are going to tell it to switch on the relay. Uh, Global Sync I've got connected here, that just allows the um, uh, ESP Easy devices to share sensors between each other, again in the rules. I haven't done anything with that yet, but I, I, I figure I might do one day, so I've kind of left it switched on. So that's my settings for the advanced settings. When you um, save those, you'll then get this extra item here called rules. So I'm just going to click on rules just now and I'll show you the rules. Oh, uh, it's timed out there. Let me just go back in there. So I'll show you the rules that I employ. So here's the rule that I use. It says uh, on light switch, switch do. Now, on light switch, switch do, basically that says when the value switch changes, do something. It then says if light state, now light switch is the physical switch, but light state is the state that the relay is currently in. Um, so if the relay is currently zero, which means the relay is deactivated, then send a signal to the um, ESP8266 pin 12 and make it go high, give it a one. Um, so basically, if the relay is off, switch the relay on. Or else, if the relay is on, switch the relay off. End if, end on. And that, for a simple switch, is all we really need to do in terms of the rules. Um, so we save that, and that just means now that if I press that button on the ESP Easy device, that it will now switch the device on. Having a look at the main settings here, you just get um, the status of the particular device. Um, but you'll notice at the bottom of my list, I also have this node list. The node list is there because I put the UDP settings on in the advance. So when I gave it a UDP port of 65500, um, all of these ESP Easy devices in my household are connected to that. And it just means they can see each other. Um, it just it's helpful for me because then I can see a list of each of the devices that I partic particularly want to see. So I hope you've uh, um, found it a useful video. If you're setting up an ESP Easy device, then, um, you know, uh, Hopefully you can use that. Um, thank you very much for, for tuning in.